It's a real pleasure to have the Chief Development Officer of Chipotle, Tabasam Zalatrawala, here with us today. And she's going to be able to uh, give us a deep dive into how this all came about. And then we're going to uh, offer you a chance to throw some questions at her. So please, let's welcome Tabasam to the stage. So here we go. Growing up in Muscat, Oman, my brother and I were always enthralled by my father's stories of his journey from Mumbai, India to Oman. Imagine how he felt as a 20-year-old stepping onto a boat and making that seven-day arduous voyage to Oman. He came to a country that had no real roads, not even electricity, and began this adventure of creating a new life. My father didn't speak a lick of Arabic. He knew very little English, and this was his first time outside of India. For years, through all of his struggles, he persevered and taught himself English, Arabic, accounting, other business skills, and his hard work paid off and he enjoyed a successful 40-year corporate career. Based on these stories, my brother and I knew that no matter what the future held for us, we could and would survive. Just like with all difficult times, we all have our own stories, right? So thank you for the opportunity to tell mine. On March 15th, 2020, I was buckled into seat 5B on the last flight back from Vancouver, BC to Los Angeles. So imagine my, and that was actually, by the way, right after restaurant spaces in Pasadena. So imagine my surprise when I see sitting next to me was a masked stranger. He never removed his mask the whole time and never made any eye contact. Stepping off the plane as I turned on my cell phone, it was full with missed calls and messages, all marked urgent. And as I began to listen to those messages, what became abundantly clear to me is that no one really knew how dramatic this immediate situation was, how long it would last, and what restrictions we would have to work in. What I can tell you is that we knew one thing for sure and we were confident that as an organization, the only way forward for us was to be grounded in our purpose of cultivating a better world and stay focused on keeping our main priorities, the main priorities, while being flexible to change, taking care of our people, and this was the time to communicate transparently with our guests, with our crew members, most of all, and our stakeholders. In that moment, it became clear to me what my, that my job had changed and what my real job as a leader was. Four months after that Vancouver flight, I found myself in seat 6C, traveling to visit Nico one of our general managers in the Denver, Colorado area. Nico was not just keeping his restaurant running efficiently, his business was thriving. And I wanted to see for myself how he was managing to serve his guests and, um, you know, and, and, and keep his team's morale up while local restrictions kept our dining rooms closed down. You see, at this point, his guests were 100% digital, ordering ahead uh, to take away either outside the restaurant. His restaurant did not have a Chipotle. It was an older restaurant. Um, and so I asked, I mean, and really believe me, before I go there, I wish you could have been there as I marveled just at the operation in his restaurant. I asked Nico how he was being able to run his restaurant so officially in spite of the challenges and continue to grow sales. Nico's answer warmed my heart. He said to me, Tabasem, 
from the first week that this disaster began to unfold, I knew I wasn't in it alone. From that first chip chat, and these are conversations we have with our leadership team, I had with our CEO and the executive leadership team, it became clear to me that they were 100% behind me and my decisions. Also, I knew that my supervisor's number one priority was that my family and I are okay. In the restaurant business, our frontline workers are our crew members and our general managers in the restaurant that keep our business going and keep our business thriving, right? Now, not just in our industry, the restaurant industry, in every industry, we were forced to develop a new way of doing business overnight, right? When you're in a situation when you can't um, travel to your office or you can't travel to get your job done, we all, everyone in this room, had to prioritize how to make available the tools and resources our teams needed wherever they are, all while ensuring that they're keeping themselves and their families safe and healthy. So I, this was not just thinking outside the box. For me, this was thinking outside the building the box was inside of, right? But I do know this. In the future, when we reflect back to this time, we will realize we've learned a magnificent lesson. And all through this time, there have been opportunities for those that have been willing to evolve and willing to change. And I know that most of Chipotle's innovations are very well documented in the industry press. I know you read it. Um, however, I don't want to make assumptions, and I also know that you're probably not as focused on them as you are on keeping your own business humming and your company afloat. I can tell you that there are numerous stories of finding opportunity within adversity or within times of adversity all across our organization. Whether it's about making Chipotle more accessible to people when they were home, or it was about new menu innovation or new restaurant design innovation. All of it. I'll tell you a story. In late 2019, Brandon Blosser, the senior manager of design and um, digital integration, was focused on a mission. He was really on a mission to simplify the labeling process in our restaurant. Sounds simple, right? Historically, though, our crew members would handwrite ingredient shelf life labels, resulting in over 48,000 labels for a restaurant each year. So we have restaurants know this. Leveraging technology, Brandon partnered with Zenfoot and digitized and automated the labeling process. And in doing so, not only simplified the back of house operation, but netting some significant labor savings. So with handwritten labels, you could generate one label in 20 seconds. Using the new platform, Brandon was able to generate 10 labels in six seconds, resulting in a saving of about $6 million annually. So think about that for a second. And I asked Brandon, how were you able to get this done so quickly and lead to great results? And his response still makes me smile. I'm sure you guys see this in your companies, too. He said to me, Tabasim, I first presented this concept to cross-functional leaders, and I was told stories of how something like this had been tried in the past and failed. Right? Sound familiar? But he said, Nothing they said could stop me from driving the program forward because I knew that our innovation simplified complexity. And what kept me going was the flexibility my supervisor provided to experiment, to fail, 
this is key, and to try new ideas with a stage gate approach. Within three months, Brandon not only developed and tested, but he was able to implement the program in over 2,800 of our restaurants. And so his innovation not just had a great return on investment, we had a great return on mission to cultivate a better world for all, and this time for our crew members. Remember, if your crew members are happy, they make happy guests. You have happy guests, they come back. Our operators in the field, too, were very quick to adopt the change, and they were grateful for these high-caliber ops partners in the support center that were focused on simplifying the complexities in the back of house. Now, you know, think about this. Innovation doesn't just come from top down. It comes from bottom up as well. Nico and Brandon were able to do what they did because they felt like they weren't in it alone. They knew without a shadow of doubt that their leaders cared about their well-being. And therefore, these everyday heroes were empowered to make decisions that allowed them to find opportunities for improvement. So ladies and gentlemen, innovation can thrive in adversity. And particularly when you empower and encourage your people on the front line in a safe environment. Now, many of my colleagues here will appreciate, especially those that are working in restaurant brands, that it is not an easy task to change plans, construction drawings, real estate even, on a dime, particularly when you're in a company that's opening in excess of 100 new restaurants a year. We all know what these development timelines look like, right? But that is exactly what we needed to do as a company. You see, our biggest challenge at Chipotle was that our restaurants were not ever designed or built to accommodate this extra digital channel. So we did find opportunity in adversity and change we did. Yes, it was a difficult time. We all know this. Um, Zoom and WebEx had become the norm. And our teams couldn't travel to do their jobs. Our real estate design and construction teams couldn't get to the job sites. But our teams rose to the challenge because they were empowered to do the work. And not only did they evolve the current restaurant, you know, and, and made both back of house and front of house digital ready, they were able to pilot and introduce a brand new restaurant prototype. Yes, you're seeing it in the back there. All while building a pipeline of alternate format digital forward restaurants. Now you're familiar with some of them. These include the digital kitchen that we introduced last year, our Chipotle only digital kitchen, and then our seam locations that are specifically designed to seam our high volume restaurants in our very established areas. And both of these, by the way, debut before the end of year this year. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Picture this, right? The team piloted this new prototype, pilot, one pilot, towards the end of 2019. And by the end of 2020, matter of 14 months, we had this new restaurant design in over 150 restaurants. So just think of how remarkable that was. And I asked our director of design, Rich, some of you may know him, um, how he was able to move so swiftly. I really wish you could meet Rich. He is a never say never kind of guy. Always upbeat, proactive, so his answer didn't really surprise me. Although I will admit, I expected a laundry list of processes, right, that him and his team had to institute in order to, uh, you know, to, to make these changes. Instead, he said to me, Tabasim, all we did is focus on keeping 
our main priority, the main priority. In a world where you could do a thousand things, narrow your focus down to what's really, really important. And for the development team, the priority was access convenience. And so nothing else mattered. He said, we just focused on ensuring that all the elements of access and convenience were included in our restaurants as we build new restaurants and as we remodel our existing ones. You know, even through the phone, I could feel and hear his excitement and pride as he talked about the rapport and camaraderie his team had built with cross-functional team partners in operations, in technology, and marketing. Yes, everyone knows it takes a village to do what we do in development. And, you know, he admitted, he said, Tabasim, I will admit it was not an easy task. I wish we could have sat around the same table in the room, in one room, but we couldn't. But the high level of trust between us within our team and with our cross-functional partners, and that includes all of the partners that we work with outside of Chipotle too, ensured that we stayed focused and on the task. So ladies and gentlemen, I think so. The question becomes, how do we continue to be innovative and find opportunities during times of adversity. From my own personal experience at Chipotle, it's really been three key principles, honestly. It's not rocket science, it's these three key principles. Just keep your purpose as the North Star while you're making all decisions. And we made decisions about people, to care for our people, whether it's about processes or business, keep your purpose at the central and ensure that you're focused on your main priorities while being flexible to change. Two, keep taking care of your people and empower them to find solutions their way because they will take care of your business. And three, keep your communication frequent and super, super transparent with your stakeholders, your guests, and your crew members. Thank you guys for uh, giving me the time and for letting me share my experience and our Chipotle story. I truly was excited to come speak with you. And so I asked my dad what he would want to tell you. And he said, remember to tell them that the greatest success does come out of times of adversity. So no matter how much money you have, and how hard the times are that you're in, continue to invest in yourself to be a better leader and to be a better version of yourself. And so I'm looking around this room full of leaders. You all are here at this conference to invest in yourself, invest in your company, to share experiences and learn from each other, right? And I challenge you that when you go back, take the time to find your everyday heroes, like Nico, like Brandon, like Rich. Because when you take the time to develop yourself and develop your leaders, we get to expand our business. And then the future is bright. So thank you. Th thank you so much, Tabas, and that's really wonderfully heartfelt. And, and I just want to uh, take a second. If you have any questions, please throw your hands up in the air, and I'll, I'll pass the microphone to you. But, uh, you know, what I really loved about your talk is the way that you seem to really drill in and focus in on what others are doing in the organization and fostering that sense of openness. That mindset that you just spent a few minutes describing, do you see that happening widespread across the restaurant industry now? Do you feel like that is uh, happening to allow for more innovation in organizations? Yeah, Jason, it's a great question. And uh, I will tell you that I am convinced that organizations that are thriving through these times and continuing to innovate are doing this because they have a people-based culture. You can invest in as much technology as you like and create the most amazing processes and pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to outside consultants, 
but unless you can really invest in your people, like from the bottom up, and make sure they have a voice in your business, you can't move forward, so I'm convinced. Hey, Meredith. Hi, Tabasam. Thank you. you. That was great. Um, the Chipotle and truly amazing, yes. wonderful job. Uh, so. Wondering if you think that a legacy QSR that has a normal order point and stack and pickup can convert their customers to something like the Chipotle or if it has to be a whole new channel that's being added on uh, to a business that historically hasn't had a fast food? Good question again. So my viewpoint is that um, our customers today are extremely digitally savvy. And we don't give ourselves enough credit as human beings that we change and adapt. Uh, the pandemic showed us that, right? When, um, let me just go back in time. When we first started the Chipotle, um, the, the, the first couple of stores were meant to be a precursor to an actual, like, an, like, like a traditional drive-through. And it wasn't until I visited these restaurants, both in Ohio, and saw how seamlessly it was working, that I thought, wait a minute, why would I ever go back? It was pretty risky, and we had to have a pretty good communication plan in place. You know, people came up to the window wanting to order at first. Yes, those things happened. They're called growing pains. So to your answer, do I think it's possible? I think it's absolutely possible. If a company is able to invest in the right kind of technology and really build on their app and their loyalty program, uh, well, it's been two years and we've amassed 25 million followers on the loyalty program. So kudos to our entire tech team that put this thing together, but also kudos to the operators on the ground that make it work real time. Um, and so I think, yeah, if the right investments are in place, the customer is convertible. So a lot of us have been talking about finding innovation and listening at all levels of the organization. Um, I'm curious in your experience with Chipotle and it being such a large company, how do you strike the right balance and how can some of our growing companies strike the right balance between bringing in the right cross-functional stakeholders into an initiative without the dreaded making decisions by committee, which can often be counterproductive? Yeah. Um, again, great question, and I will answer this briefly, Melissa, but if you're in the conference, I urge you to connect with Eric Zambrano and Everardo. I'm, I'm sure they can spend an hour telling you how we go through this. Um, but essentially, it's ensuring that your committee includes operators. You, you've got to. They're the ones that execute this. Keep your ear really close to the ground. Because sometimes, you know, when we're in a room designing around the table, it looks really good, it feels really good, but it doesn't function very well. So if you want true success, I think the, the trick is to keep your operators really involved in the decision-making process and iterate. This is not about perfection, it's progress, folks, always. So did we hit the jackpot with the first Chipotle? Absolutely not. Did we get it absolutely right the first time? We didn't. But you just continue to iterate and keep your ear to the ground. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it.